Hello, this will be a video on how to do Probit and Logit models with the R software. So I have already opened up R and this is R Studio and I have reorganized the windows a little bit. So on this side of the screen I have the program that I have downloaded from the website and it's ready to go. And on this side of the screen I have already highlighted the whole program here and um, hit run so that the program is, is executed. So what kind of Probit and Logit models we're going to do? I already have a video clip on um, showing a little bit more information about this problem. So it's basically data on whether or not people have health insurance. So this will be the dependent variable, a zero one variable. And we're going to try to explain this decision. So the first thing to do is read in the data. So make sure you download the data. Uh, and this is where I have stored my data on my hard drive. And this is the name of the file that we're going to use, Provit underscore insurance, and it's a CSV file. So I'm reading in the data and attaching my data. It's now in memory. And if I actually look at one of the windows that you have here, uh, this is my data and you can see this is the dependent variable insurance with zeros and ones and this whether or not the person is retired, the age, health status and so on up to here these would be our independent variables. Okay, so I'm going to um, uh, minimize this and going back to the program. So the first thing to do is define the variables and I'm using the cbind command. So my in independent variable would be insurance, whether or not a person has insurance, zero or one. Uh, and that would be assigned as my y variable. And these would be the independent variables listed with commas. Uh, and I'm going to cbind these into uh, an x um, uh, the x variable. So this way all you have to do once you have this program is change where your data is located in the name of the file, change the name of your y variable and change the names of the x variables right here and then the rest of the program should run uh, without you having to change anything. So this is good. So the first thing to do is get some descriptive statistics and that's uh, done with a summary of y. Uh, and if you um, go back to the file that I have executed, uh, this will be the summary of y. So we see that the mean is 0.38. Uh, so basically 38% of the people have insurance. For them, y is equal to 1. And here's the summary of x, the independent variables, and we have all of them. And they're a little bit messed up here because my window isn't stretched enough. Um, but you can uh, copy and paste some of these uh, for your table. The next thing that you can do is um, do a table of Y and this basically gives you the frequencies for Y. If you look at this uh, here, it gives you the numbers of zeros and ones and if you divide this table of Y divided by the sum of the table of Y, then now you have the proportion that we, we have uh, before, right here, you have the, the um, percent frequency for y equals 1 is 38 and the percent frequency for y equals 0 is uh, 61. Okay, so the next thing that we will do is just execute a simple regression model, which you shouldn't do because we have a 0, 1 variable as a dependent variable. And the way to do that is with LM, linear model, you put y, that's the dependent variable, the squiggly part, and then you're listing all the x variables. If you have the names of your variables, you can just list them just like that with, com uh, with commas in, in between the variable names. So you're assigning this, uh, the name or less regression, and then you're summarizing it, and here are the results when you execute that command. Um, so you have again, um, these are the coefficients, standard errors, and t-values. Next, you can do a logit model coefficients. And to do that, uh, you use the GLM procedure, uh, y 
and x are your dependent and independent variables. Then you have comma family, and this is binomial uh, distribution, and link equals logit. So this basically is calling the logit model. And then you do summary logit because I called this object a uh, logit. Um, logit. And so here are the results here that we have. We have the coefficients, the estimates, and we have the standard errors and uh, we have basically the p-values here uh, and again you can see the number point uh, 19 is the coefficient uh, that I have listed in the table in the handout so you have if people are retired they're more likely to um, uh, have insurance and you cannot interpret the magnitude only more likely or less likely in this case next thing we can do is also estimate um, the odds ratios for the logit model and to do that you basically are taking the exponent of the logit model coefficients here and here are the odds ratios that you have and again an odds ratio higher than one would mean that you basically have uh, that the outcome of people having insurance is more likely than the uh, outcome of people not having insurance and vice versa for the um, for numbers less than one the next thing that we're going to do is estimate a profit model and if you can see this is exactly the same as the one that we have before for the logit model the only difference is that we replace the link with the profit um, and so we're calling this object profit and then summarizing it here um, and here's the coefficients and the standard errors and so on and again we have this coefficient being 0.11 which is different than the 0.19 we have before but again the only thing you can say is that if people are retired they're more likely to have insurance you cannot say how much more likely okay so next thing that we're going to do here is to calculate the marginal effects for the OLS regression and here's the results that we have from the OLS regression we're just picking up the coefficients and the coefficients are the marginal effects so if you look at the uh, results here these are exactly the same as the coefficients uh, for an OLS model uh, as the marginal effects so in order to calculate the average marginal effects for the logit model uh, one thing that you can do is uh, you can get the predicted values from the logit model uh, and then take the average of those with a mean and calculate the uh, logit uh, scalar and basically then you you multiply this number by the coefficients coming from the logit model uh, and then you're going to get the marginal effects and they are listed uh, right here for the logit model and now you could go ahead and actually uh, interpret this value so this one refers to the retired uh, per to the retired variable so if people are retired they're four percent more likely to uh, have insurance and same thing with the profit model uh, you have if they're retired they're four percent more likely to to have um, insurance and again this this number here refers to that uh, variable up up there okay so you can see that the coefficients could be very different for the profit and the logit model but the marginal effects are very uh, very similar okay so we talked about uh, marginal effects and now we will talk about predicted probabilities so you can use the command predict for the OLS regression and then summarize that and here we have the predicted probabilities and the mean again is 0.38 which is very similar to the sample frequency that we have for the logit model predicted probability you're using logit the results that we have here for the logit model and then we have uh, comma type equal equals response and that would get the predicted probability and then you can summarize those and same for the profit model uh, and here are these predicted probabilities again you can see very similar results to what we have with the um, uh, sample uh, frequency 
Okay, so once we've calculated the predicted probabilities, we can calculate the percent correctly predicted values. And um, you're going to use the fitted values from the probit and the logit model. And um, these would be the predicted values. And then we also have the true values, which is the y value that comes from the data. And so you want to know which ones are true. OK, so 0, 1, these are the actual values, and these are the predicted 0, 1s. So across the diagonal here, we have the percent correctly predicted. And if you sum up these two numbers divided by the summation of all of them, you're going to have the um, uh, percent correctly predicted, which I think was uh, about 62%. Okay, the next thing that you can do is calculate the McFadden's pseudo R square. And the way to do that, you need to calculate 1 minus the log likelihood of the probit model divided by the log likelihood of a probit model where you have all the, the, um, the coefficients restricted to 0. Well, how are you going to do that? You're going to estimate a probit model for which the formula would be Y regressed onto a constant basically one. So you don't have any of the independent variables. And if you call this probit zero, then you're picking up this probit zero here. And that's the lo log likelihood of that. And so the McFadden's R square would be a number of point, uh, 0.068, which is kind of like a low R square. We don't have a very good um, goodness of fit for the, uh, for the probit model. Okay, so this is all I had about how to do probit and logit models in R. Thanks for watching.